KGVO Missoula, KGVO FM, Frenchtown, AM 1290 and 101.5 FM. Sports Talk Tonight and streaming online at NewstalkKGVO.com. Welcome one, welcome all. It is Sports Talk Tonight with Gerns and Bedard. It's a Wednesday. It's dark. Uh, the uh, the time has changed, Denny. Yes, I'm you. glad I don't work till 5 o'clock in the evening because it's kind of dreary and I don't like it. You uh, you couldn't be with us last week. You missed the the first dark in its entirety show because uh, we had <laughs> we had fallen back the Sunday before. So you know, I I, I had I journeyed west a little bit to uh, I was down. I wanted to get down to Portland, you know, to march against Trump in those rallies. I'm just joking, just joking. <laughs> Scott's a happy guy. Yeah, but uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I I'm happy in general, but uh, no the the. Uh, Denny, we haven't talked since the since the election. I don't know if you touched on it, but we have a new president. Uh, apparently, president elect, yeah, they're yeah. they're trying to uh, to find a way to to not let it happen. Yeah, there seems to be an objection here and there it, to it, that. It's mm-hmm. funny the 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 people that were just chastising Donald Trump when he wouldn't answer the question in, in the debate if he would uh, you know if he lost if he would be a, a big enough man and admit that you know he had lost and that was like. Uh, political suicide and how can you do that that's the that's the one thing and boy now that the shoe is on the other foot denny boy i tell you what it's ironic isn't it but hey this is a sports talk show denny sports talk tonight gerns and bedard <clears throat> that's all right you get your one minute uh, political forum every week <laughs> and just because you haven't used one in the past 70 weeks does not mean you get 70 minutes well that tonight. was 30 You're seconds hey. <laughs> i don't think so not according to not according to my record machine here hey it, it's all good denny sports yeah, talk tonight is. we are live from the kgvo studio remember we are streaming worldwide on news.kgvo.com on the am side of the dial 1290 on the fm side 101.5 follow us on twitter at sports talk back podcasts online at news.kgvo.com and our phone number as always is Four zero six seven two one twelve ninety, and I had the privilege of actually listening to the FM side of the dial, uh, the one hundred one point five on Saturday. In route, you were coming home as I was driving back, and I wish that I wouldn't have listened. To be honest with you, it was uh, painful, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, as yeah, our uh, like uh, every every time Montana would move down into northern Colorado territory. Okay, we got him. Oh uh, well, okay, we didn't get him on that drive. I've set it up. Okay, now we got him. Uh, okay, I guess next time. Now, okay, now we got them, and and it was it was a, it was a game of that. You know, uh, just uh, and I didn't listen to the whole thing, but from what I gathered, it was a game of uh, dropped passes, uh, fumble, uh, muffed punt, missed extra point, blocked field goal, blocked punt, mm-hmm. uh, just a kind of a general crappy game. Yeah, yeah. If. Uh... If you had a snake bite in your Gatorade, you must have been serving it to Montana Grizzly football players because if if something could go, if something could go just wrong enough for them not to finish, either as a couple times on defense too, but uh, on offense especially, it happened. And remember when you and I, you, you and I, we didn't get to see each other. We worked together on Saturday morning uh, doing the statewide tailgate show, but you were on the phone and they they hooked us up. I was in here in the studio. He asked me about my on track number and I said two. 25. That means uh, uh, they, they cannot have more than, than two plays of 25 yards or more because really bad things happen. I don't know if they had more than the two, but both of them resulted in long touchdowns. One a pass, one a run. And it was it was that, you know, give up the big play on defense, special teams, a, a handful of gaffes that, that cost you a lot of points. And it was it was just, it was so frustrating. You know, you... you, you I, I guess what you take out of that is you guys are a lot better than that. You can say that and not be, but you guys are a lot better than that. I, I hope you come out Saturday with your bodies on fire. Forget just the hair. Come out with your bodies on fire and and atone for that because they, they, they've got to be. And, uh, you know, you I, I don't know if you ever went into a Grizz Cat game following a loss in your career, but, but it's just one of those things where you, you've got to be so – you got to be so mad. Forget that you still maybe are playing with for a a playoff spot. We need to ask Gurns that playoffs or not playoffs. You know when I was when I was a senior uh, in '94, we had lost two games in a row. Actually, okay. we had lost uh, Boise State, and then we lost uh, at Idaho State as well. And then we came back and beat the Cats, right. and then had a nice little playoff run. 
But, uh, you know, the thing that's the most frustrating for me and, and probably, a, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not coaching calls. Um, it's not kids not making plays. It's, it's just you can see how good we can be. Mm-hmm. You know, you put 60-plus points on the board in the last three home games we've had here. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, flip the coin and how, how just how not good that we look. Well, yeah, it, it kind of reminds me of uh, you know, some college basketball teams you watch where, you know, they're just not going to lose at home, but they get on the road and, and it's, it's tough to win on the road. I don't care what sport it is, but it's almost like that. It's almost more like a basketball team than a football team is so that you just cannot – you can't finish anything, and it, and Coach did, did lament about that quite a bit on the, on his show yesterday. We'll have some of the audio for that on uh, on our pregame on Saturday. But uh, yeah, just uh, just a lot of frustration because three phases of the game, you can't seem to get them. You know, I, I would say it was special teams as much as anything on Saturday. You know, if if that had been pure, then maybe you're okay. Yeah, uh, if you'd only given up one big play for a touchdown set of two. Maybe you're okay, but um, and it, and it's amazing. Uh, minus a couple of dropped passes in key situations, there were uh, a fumble, a muff, uh, and a missed extra point and a blocked field goal. It's amazing how good coaches become when yeah. that stuff doesn't happen, doesn't it? I mean, it, it's 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 amazing. You go and, and read a bunch of stuff and you hear talk around town and uh, and you know how oh, terrible yeah. our coaching staffs are, and it's like yeah, yeah. you know. Two or three plays go the other way, and our coaches are pretty They're awesome. Aren't they? Yeah, you know, yeah. I will say this though, Denny, and one of the one of the deals with not being able to close and the inconsistency um, comes with youth. And if you look at our two deep and see how many freshmen and sophomores are on that two deep, um, you realize just how young we are. Yeah. and that sounds like an excuse, and I guess it is. But uh, we'll just uh, you know we'll we'll well and call and, it what it uh, is. And you and I, I think we talked a little bit about this at the the last home game a couple of weeks ago. Is that youthful players, youthful coaches? That is a very very young coaching staff. Oh yeah, and you know they they, they might um, they might uh, make an error or two as well. Yeah, but. Doesn't mean everybody's not going to be great because they've got some incredible young talent on that ball club. Yes, they do, Denny. And I tell you what, uh, we are going to kick the snot <laughs> out of the cats. I do not care if I have to run down on that field myself. Oh, I can't wait for your and, score uh, prediction on Saturday. I haven't even gotten fired up yet. I oh, mean, I, I haven't even gotten I fired know. up. It's it's just I starting. Know. The blood is just starting to uh, boil. Yeah. You know, if I were to drink a glass of milk, it would curdle. I'm <clears> going to get fired up, Denny. One of the things they were talking about at the the show. Well, maybe I should save until Saturday. Day. No, I'll, I'll ask you now. They were talking about they were talking about how much this this means to all the Montana kids, and it's important for those Montana kids to convey that to the out of state kids, so they can just get just get as as fired up and as as cranky uh, as the as the Montana kids. But you're not a Montana kid originally, and you're about as as fired up and cranky as any uh, former Grizz. That yeah, I, that cranky, I, did, pissed. Did you somebody know? did somebody have to instill <laughs> that in you, or did you just come? Uh, that was on your uh, that was on your resume. He he at, at birth hated the Bobcats. You no, know, it was it was a learned trait. Uh, it, it, I learned that uh, you know that whole week leading up to it. We used to the freshmen, the retro freshmen guarded the M. Ah, if if the game was home, so I'd so forgotten about that. Me and twenty five other red shirts <laughs> grabbed as much beer as we could carry, and uh, and some firewood and and fire starter, and we went we went up to the M and then over the top, and there's a little bowl back there, and we must have had a hundred people up there, all the people, wow. from girls and guys from our dorms. I mean, yeah. And every time somebody came up, you'd sing the fight song, uh-huh. and. Uh, People said they could hear us down, you know, sure. on campus. You know, we were guarding yeah. it against the Bobcats. And yeah. Remember, I sprained my ankle coming down the damn thing. And uh, uh, anyways, it was uh, you knew you knew pretty quick the importance of the game. Good times, Gerns. Um, very good times. Hey, sports talk tonight with uh, Gerns and Bedard. We have very special guests. Yes, in we do. Studio tonight, the from Unbeaten's Double A. Yeah, state volleyball champion Sentinel Spartans. Propelled to that glory, obviously, by their visit to this show a few weeks ago. Of course, yeah. they were yeah. inspired. Oh, yeah. oh, Very we, inspired. Oh, we motivate. We uh, we, we do. We agitate. I, I, don't, uh, know we, I don't know. Denigrate. We, we do some Tate. What does denigrate mean? That mm-hmm. rhymes. I know I what know. that. Make fun of? Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, pretty anyway. much. But head coach Aaron Keffler and uh, Tizzy Whita, uh, yeah. she of the, uh, the game-winning stuff. 
Yes. The, the state championship winning stuff. Yes. They will be joining us here after our first break. And uh, I think they've almost got the bronze done in front of Sentinel High of that play. You know, just very nice. Yeah. Very yeah. nice. I'm sure she has way Welders better hops than you and I. I'm sure she The only does. hops you know are the ones you drink. <laughs> but anyways, I digress. Wait, wait, what now? <sighs> hey, let's get to trivia so we can get to uh, uh, the state sure. champs. We can get to trivia right now, right now. Trivia. Sports Talk tonight, 721-1290. That is brought to you by Fuddruckers and Happy Days Car Wash from Brent and the crew at Happy Days Car Wash. We've got a gift card for the Works Car Wash. Happy Days, Missoula's favorite again in the uh, last Missoulian Reader's Poll. So that's good for the Happy Days Car Wash. They, they have two locations, but one they've, they've got closed down for some maintenance and upgrades and things like that for the winter months. But they still got the big Happy Days out on Brooks between Fairbridge Inn and Suites. And Pizza Hut, that's where that is. So we got a Works Car Wash gift card. And from Fuddruckers on North Reserve, a $10 gift certificate. World's greatest hamburgers, you start with premium beef, buns made from scratch every single day right there. And you get to top it yourself to make it absolutely perfect. Corey wants you to come in and gobble up a Santa Fe turkey burger. Savory grilled turkey burger, pepper jack cheese, bacon, a cream jalapeno aioli on there. And by the way, uh, we want to mention... That, uh, again, this year, this is something they do every year. It's, it's a wonderful gesture on their part. Fuddruckers teams up with the Goodfellows Club, and they offer a free traditional Thanksgiving meal. They're at Fuddruckers. You know, they, they get out to this. It's not cheeseburgers and onion rings, although at Fuddruckers, that wouldn't be bad. Not, no, that's no, no, right. no, but it's a traditional Thanksgiving meal for anyone who would like to join them. So uh, that's, that's really nice. They do that from 10 to 2 on Thanksgiving Day. So gift certificate to Fuddruckers, gift card to Happy Days Car Wash, if you know the answer, 721-1290. Well, uh, Gerns, with uh, the Grizz Cat Brawl of the Wild upon us this coming Saturday, we thought it was time for some name game scramble fun. Name game scramble fun. Let's let all the letters, all right. we'll let all the letters dance into position here. There they go. All right. Got them all in order. Now. See. If, uh, oh, you. Sorry. Well, if, if I take the first letter of the last name of the last five Montana State head coaches, and I, I scramble them up just a little bit. Like, um, oopsie. Hold on. We got to turn that down. You guys be quiet over there. So if I scramble them up. Just a, a, a little bit. So they're not in chronological order. I can spell the word A, chaps, B, shack, or C, cargo. If I take the first letter of the last five Montana State head coaches and I scramble them up a little bit so they're not in chronological order, I think that's the only clue, that's the only hint that I will give you right now. Uh, I can spell the word A, chaps, B, shack, or C, cargo. I got a D for you. Stink. <laughs> Wait, D, D. There's no D in stink. Well, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Seven. How about bad with two Ds? Seven, two, one, twelve, ninety. I think there there might be one little giveaway thing in there, but I'm not sure. Seven, two, one, twelve, ninety. Somebody knows the answer, Gerns. I got to get to the phone. Let's hope the FC, F, uh, FSC, FCS or whatever FCC is not listening tonight. Anyways, hey, we're gonna take a break. When we come back, we will have the answer to the trivia and yeah. the state champion Sentinel volleyball Woo! program leaders, head honchos, and Tizzy Whita. When we come back, Sports Talk tonight. The savings continue at CHS Mountain West Cooperative with November's Hot Buy. Yo, Missoula Sports. Every second of every day. Sports Talk tonight with Gerns and Bedard. We have a little announcement here involving the Brawl of the Wild, Mr. Richmond. Are we good? Are we good? PSA, PSA, PSA. So look, here's what, uh, you know, Uber partnered up with Missoula County DUI Task Force to make sure that uh, 
game goers and people that are participating in the Brawl of the Wild have safe rides home. So this Saturday on the 19th only, every ride that people take from uh, with Uber from the stadium, a dollar will go to the Missoula County DUI Task Force to fund education and information on safe rides. So please, folks, if you don't have the Uber app, download it and make sure you get home safe. First-time users actually could use the code Wild Brawl and receive fifteen dollars off their first ride, virtually a free ride. So there's no excuse in not taking Uber home if you're in any way inebriated or uh, however. <laughs> right, shouldn't be driving, folks. Exactly. So anyway, thanks for that, guys. You bet. That's right. Take an Uber. Take an Uber home from the game this weekend, please, because we'll be celebrating. Right, Denny? I assume so. All right. Hey, you got... <laughs> Thanks, you, sir, Sky you, Richmond. You got us a winner, Denny? I do. It is uh, Dean Bush, good friend of Sports Talk tonight. Dean, you told me where you're in the... Uh, you live in the, the, the Blackfoot area, I think you said, and then things are starting to get a little white there, huh? <laughs> yeah, no. I, yeah, just uh, like 12 miles out of Bonner. But, yeah, things are starting to <laughs> turn a little white up here. Yeah. Not that, yeah. you know... Nothing you're not used to, but I, I imagine Missoula will start seeing a little bit of that here pretty quick. Yeah, as well. it was, it's a little bit of a bummer, but yeah. you know what? I guess uh, we we know how to live with it. So Yes, sir, we do. All right, uh, trivia time. Well, uh, Grizz Cat, Brawl of the Wild on Saturday. It is time for uh, Name Scramble Fun. We, uh, we had our scramblers in here to get that all mixed up for you. If I take the first letter of the last... Five Montana State head coaches and scramble them up a little bit so they're not in chronological order. I can spell the word A, chaps, B, shack, or C, cargo. What do you think there, Dean Bush? And so for whatever reason, I thought it would, I, I'm going to go with B. S as in Earl Solomonson, 87 to 91. H as in Cliff Heisel, 92 to 99. A, as in Dave Arnold, 83 to 86. C, as in Jeff Choate, present. And K, as in Mike Kramer. That was the only one that had a K in it, Gerns. That's why I thought you might uh, you might analyze that. Hey, I got a, I got a D for you. <laughs> hacks. Oh, as yeah. In all those coaches but are a I'm bunch of hacks. I'm also curious why, why this man spends so much time thinking about this stuff. Well, I didn't spend that much time thinking about it, Dean. You know, maybe a... Oh, okay. Oh, a day or two is all. Well, I thank you very much. Yeah. Well, no, we appreciate you listening. I've got your mailing address, and uh, stay warm, stay dry, stay tuned into the show, and I'll get your prizes mailed out to you, all right? Well, thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. You guys have a good night. You too, buddy. Dean Bush, our latest winner, Gerns. Awesome. Congratulations, Dean. (laughs) Listener number 25. Yeah, I I did stretch. I had to stretch a little bit for that one, I admit. Because I think we got two last week when I was gone. Usually we have one listener a week, but I was. Kyle would tell you a lot more because you know Kyle was was you. Kyle was your your fill in guy. Our executive producer sat across from me. Skinnier version of me. We had the voice of the Grizz, Riley Corcoran, in here, and so somehow we we got by. All right, we got by. Well, hey, we're gonna get by right now because we have uh, some return guests in here uh, that were with us just a couple, three or four weeks ago, and uh, now they're back in studio to tell us. Uh, just how awesome winning a state championship is and was. Uh, we've got the Sentinel Spartan head volleyball coach Aaron yeah. Kepler in studio and Tizzy Whita, who uh, who had the last block of, of the season. How about that? To end your career, Tizzy, with Tizzy the going first, with first. with the last with the last play. How cool is that? Well, when I saw the ball go up, I was like, "This is my ball. Like I'm going to touch it, even if I have to." take Elsa out I'm gonna block this ball because this is how I'm gonna end it and so when I just pressed as hard as I could and prayed that nothing got in the net and nobody else got in the net or under the net and then when I saw it go down I just dropped to my knees because like the best thing I've ever felt before that is that is so cool congratulations by the way guys thank you um one of those deals where you know it was I don't know if I want to say it was expected but uh you know you guys had a pretty darn good shot of winning this thing from the start of the season and you went from start to finish undefeated which is a a, a heck of a thing to do um how did you keep just the your eye on the prize how did you stay focused and how did you how did you get that accomplished 
Um, we had a sheet we made up that like had all of our goals on it, and we wrote believe on it, and we had to read oh. it every day, and that was that helped. And then practices, we practiced like some of the best practices we've ever had that week right before state, and we just get, went into it with a good feeling. I mean, we slept good. She took our phones, so <laughs> 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 that was the best I've slept in a while. And then um, that coach is tough. I know. Ooh. Well, your yeah. dad's probably texting you making sure That's you're a Coach Fro thing, by the way. A Coach Fro gets credit for that. <laughs> teenager without a phone. That, that's probably worse than playing with no sneakers. <laughs> we'll play volleyball with no sneakers, but don't take our phone. <laughs> <laughs> probably didn't know who, who won the presidential election. I mean, that's, you know, the phones aren't going to be there. Jeez <laughs> yeah. Louise. Um, but, uh, and I didn't realize this because I was actually out of town um, all week, but... Uh, what happened in the semifinals? Do tell. Well, we thought we had it. First two games, we played hard. We won them. And so we kind of went into the third game a little too confident and kind of took our foot off the gas. And they were ahead. Senior was ahead 17-9. to nine. And so we kind of had a wake-up call from coaches and ourselves. Like, we just realized that we couldn't do that. And we came back. And we beat them. And I think the state tournament, we really peaked, especially in that game. Like, that was the turning point. Hmm. Awesome. Send, yeah, it on, it uh, send it on over to the coach there, Tizzy. So. Hello. Uh, well, you must <laughs> Thanks be. for having us. Oh, our <laughs> pleasure. We're, so, we're excited to have you here. And uh, you must be very thrilled and, and, and very proud. And Scott made a point a few minutes ago about uh, you know, it, was, it was kind of expected, but I, I suppose it had to be a little tough to keep the, the kids focused and that it, it was uh, expected. And anything less, I mean, anything, yeah. anything less, I, I got to believe that would have been awfully disappointing for a team like this. And I, I think even taking second place last year with such a young team, um, it started then, you know, mm -hmm. with the expectations. And our focus all year long was just many, many team building moments and many moments that um, keep them focused on the bigger picture of life, not just winning state in volleyball and um, just making sure that they knew that there was, you know, more to it than just winning and keeping the pressure off that way. So, you know, we talked to them about having targets on their back all year and, these girls love the sport and love each other so much that I don't think anything was going to get in their way. And um, so it was awesome. It definitely was. Well, other than that 17-9 to 9 mess in the third set, you know, there, what did, did Coach take a time out there? Is that, uh, did, oh, yeah, yeah, I what, did. What did, what did what I did, used what did, every time out I needed to use, I would use it for sure. Because we actually had a little bit of an issue um, in Flathead, our last travel game the week before. And so, you know, it's just you start to – um, probably feel a little pressure. And, sure. Oh, um, yeah. My point is just to wipe any doubts out of their minds and, and let them know that it's okay to be great and they don't need to, you know, worry about playing because you have to, but playing because you want to. And sure. these girls listen and they react and they trust each other and they trust themselves and they trusted me. And, and Colleen and I definitely, you know, we have a great coaching staff, but... She and I, you know, take charge at our games and um, we work really well together and we both send the messages at different times that just keep them grounded and just making sure that they know that, um, they, that, that they could do it and they could make it happen. So, you know, we also early on before state, you know, really had great time together and, you know, we had um, team building sessions in terms of talking about things that they needed to focus on and one of our coaches, Karen Amba, who's been in sports many, many years, we're really happy to have her back this year. She talked about, don't worry about people, you know, the target on you. You put the target on everybody else and go get it. You know, don't wait for somebody to come at you, but you go at them. Well, and, so. and, and one of the targets you got to be referring to is it's wonderful to be undefeated, but uh oh, we're undefeated. Yeah. And, and everybody's sure. now, now everybody, as if it wasn't going to be tough enough, now everybody is out to beat the team that's undefeated. Sure. Absolutely. Well, nice, nice problem to have. I but, know, you know it is. And the media wanted to focus on the, you know, the whole not losing a set thing all year. And mm. that was never a goal of ours, yeah, not to lose that. a set. So our goal was to play our game as much as possible or all the time. And, so I would always shut them down anytime they wanted to talk about you, that. You guys lost a set, though, right? I mean, pretty close.
close to right after you got done with us in the studio that first time. We lost the set. Our first set that we lost was in pool play at the MCHS Invitational Hell in Capital. Beat us the very last set of the day. And it was done. You know, that whole idea about not losing a set. And we, it was over for us in a sense that, you know, we didn't ever have that as a goal. No. Everybody wanted to focus on that. And then we could move on. And honestly, like the second day of the MCHS tournament, we played amazing all day long. Kind of a and good thing. Kind of let the let great. the pressure out of a tire a little bit and just kind of. You bet. All right. You know. Yeah, because there's going to be there's a lot of great teams and they're going to have great moments. And one of my yeah. big things with that is that we need to respect them and then answer. You but know? you can see so. why Gerns and I were concerned about that because our reputation's at stake here. <laughs> We bring you on the show, <laughs> yeah. and then what do you go do? You know, you look, <laughs> we lose. Look, thanks, guys. Thank you for jinxing. No. <laughs> we, no we don't, we don't have a bad record. We don't no, have a bad we're, record. No, we're pretty good. You, yeah. you make us look good, though, let me yeah. tell you. I don't know. I don't know if we'll get the Zoo Town All Stars back in here, but uh, other, <laughs> other than that, I don't think we've done too bad. Too bad. No, we had As a great a time chart. when we were here with you before. Sure. Everybody loved it. They had an awesome time with you guys. So Thank thanks for good. having us very much. Our pleasure. So Tizzy, do you have aspirations of playing in college? What's what's your uh, what's your idea? What's your goals? Well, after I was gonna wait and see like if I wanted to do club after what happened at state, like just see how it goes, and I'm gonna end it on that. Like. I was like, I don't want to end anyway. I want to be happy. I want to remember it like that. So I'm done. Hey, that's wow. cool. <laughs> she might coach. I'm going to coach, yeah. yeah she's gonna okay. coach. So I can like still be around it. But That's awesome. Yeah. I like that. Wow. That's Thank really you. cool. Oh, good for you. And uh, and looking already, I know you're already look, looking forward to next year. You bet. What do you we got going what? on? I'm looking forward to watching our Spartans play some basketball because we have a lot of great basketball players on our volleyball team. That's usually and how that works, isn't it? Yeah. I can't wait to support them in their next sport. Yeah, many are multi-sport athletes, and so we're going to be doing that first. And we do have a lot of returners for sure, and um, it's going to be an exciting year again next year, definitely. And I, we tried not to talk about that that much this year and really cherish it this year. Don't you know? Don't look ahead until it's over. So, but yes, it, it's going to be positive so I've, I've never had a chance to enjoy the experience what is an all all class state tournament like they do that for wrestling i believe at the billings metra they do yeah. it for volleyball in in bozeman what is the atmosphere it's of that thing quite like? an event um I mean, actually got, part got, what, of our four, four matches going on at once sometime? four matches all on the floor at the same time and they don't start any match early so it's like 10 12 2 4 6 and 8 very long days for the officials for sure but you know, some of those smaller schools bring their bands and their crowds, and I mean, it's it's definitely way fun. And we had this huge wave of purple. All of our parents got purple T-shirts, and so actually, one of the biggest things is who gets the next seat for the next game. They like fight for seats <laughs> over the courts. It's so funny. Oh my gosh! So like, hey, lady, yeah. quit crying down there and get out of the seat. <laughs> I know the pr the prime seats for your for your teams. Uh, Match, yeah. So everybody's pretty respectful, though. But That's awesome. yeah, it's quite an event. It really is. It's fun. Was there was there any team I mentioned? You mentioned the Billing School. Was there was there any team that uh, had had you faced everybody during the season? Uh, there there were no. Did you have to take on anybody new in the state tournament? Um, we had not played Skyview. Okay. We did not see Skyview at the Great Falls Invitational. We actually watched them, but we never played them. Yeah. So that was our first match there. Um. So yeah, we. You know, we we were able to scout them a little bit and and make sure that we knew what we were facing, but um, other than that, we played uh, our second match was Bozeman, and we played Bozeman twice at Great Falls High or at the Great Falls Invitational, and we played them in regular season, so mm -hmm. we saw them, and we had a, a four set barn burner of a match on Thursday night at eight o'clock with them. It was definitely a, a battle. Um, they played hard and well, and. Um, and we won in four, and then we just played Billing Senior twice, so only three teams this year at state. But yeah, wow. so yeah, it was fun. It was, That's it was awesome. really great. That's it was so great cool. to just finish what we started um, from day one, and that was definitely nice to ride out the whole wave. Yeah. So, well, have there been any uh, celebrations or uh, accolades? Of Things Sentinel? are coming. What's, I got what's, uh, what's Buffalo going on? Wild Wings called us today and said we'd love to host your team for dinner. So oh. we're going to do that next week, and we're going to try to get that fire truck ride in. Okay. We actually the fire trucks met us at the exit coming into town too. That was really fun. So, um, one of my old friends, Derek Mullins, who's a fireman in town, he um, 
played many years of correct volleyball with him and he was on the one of the trucks so he was really excited to meet us and escort us through town coming in and so yeah i and i met with my ad today and there's going to be like a dinner of champions and yeah several things coming for the girls they definitely earned it and it's going to be a lot of fun to celebrate so Definitely, yeah. definitely well deserved. Thank you so much, you guys. Thanks for having us back. Well, now we expect you to go undefeated uh, next year too. Uh, <laughs> One Ar- match Aaron. at a time. That's what I always yeah. say. Coach, don't Coach overlook Eric. anything. Why don't Why don't you talk a little bit about what you uh, expect or what you're uh, looking forward to in uh, in 2017? Sure. So, uh, our JV squad, um, they they lost their very first match against Coeur d'Alene this year, but after that, they went 18 and 0. So okay. So we have put me not in, only put did me our in my place, girl. cupboard did our, cupboard not bare. <laughs> not only did our varsity go twenty six and zero, but our JV went eighteen and zero, and that that's was a, that's phenomenal. Uh, it that's really just, was. Wow. So our coach Teen Harrington, she's doing a fabulous job. But you know, we have some players coming up that are going to replace some of our seniors that we're sad to see go. But you know, some of those kids get the chance to come in and play with those j- other juniors who have been part of it so we'll be senior heavy next year for sure um but we're gonna let them enjoy it and you know one year at a time one year at a time so um lots of our juniors that will be back kylie frolick and elsa godwin serena moreno is our libero and she was just a rock for us we have another ds mariel warren who played great back row um Shelby Schwain, she's a sophomore, so she's only going to be a junior next year, and she was our other outside hitter, and she was amazing at state this year too. So lots of kids to look forward to coming back. And, uh, yeah, Jordan Schwain, of course, one of our captains as well. She'll be a senior as well. She'll probably – she's a setter and, and backed up Chelsea Bone when we needed her to back up Chelsea. So hopefully she'll be looking forward to doing some quarterbacking for us this <laughs> next year. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We got some some good kids coming back and we're definitely excited. Well, uh come next uh end of next summer we will definitely have you back <laughs> to uh to talk about yeah. what's going on with sure the thing. with next year and whatever whatever you guys have going on and Tizzy, uh, you're not you're not playing volleyball. What are what are your plans next fall? What are you uh, looking forward to do? Well, my dad might not be very happy about this, but I'm going to probably end up attending MSU. <laughs> Yeah, I won't. I won't ever be a cat fan, but I. I want to. Such a thing. That's Willie. <laughs> Does he know about this? Do we need to call him for you? Or? No, he knows. Cause, he just because uh, we know you don't have a cell phone. Coach Kepler took it away and probably <laughs> yeah. probably pawned it. Okay, as long as he knows. If you no, need he us, knows. He, we don't right. talk about it a lot. Yeah, we can. He keeps can asking, call "Have you applied to UM? Have you applied to UM?" But um, yeah, J- Jukes. Is juking the, the the conversation? Yes, and you, very you're much. choosing MSU because you would like to to do what? Well, I want to be a physician's assistant, and I kind of also want to get away from my twin brother a little bit because he wants okay. to he wants he wants to go to U of M. All right, all right. Um, so we'll give you that some one. space. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I will if I don't hold it against you, then nobody will. So yeah. you're all thank right. you. You're all Thank right. you. You're all right. You're all right. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Good luck, champ. Thanks. Hey, thank Great you. Great job, gals. Thank, thank you so you. much for joining Congratulations. us, guys. Congratulations. Aaron Keffler, Tizzy Wida, Sentinel Spartan State Champions. Has a nice ring so to it. I bet that sounds good when somebody <laughs> else says it. Hey, when we come back, we're going to be talking about FCS playoffs, in my opinion, when we come back. Sports Talk tonight. Sports Talk Tonight, live from the KGBO studio. Missoula Sports. Sports Sports Talk Tonight, brought to you in part by Orange Street Food Farm, locally owned and operated grocery store featuring the freshest fruits and vegetables, fresh meats, and a great beer and wine selection. By Grizzly Liquor, located downtown next to the Iron Horse, Big Sky, Big Selection, and online at grizzlyliquor.com. By Bell McCall Ford, a great selection of new and used cars, trucks, and SUVs, and great deals on 2016 closeouts, your locally owned low-cost auto dealer for over 100 years in downtown Hamilton. And by Granite Pharmacy, locally owned and operated pharmacy on South Avenue between Shopco and Big Sky High School, this Friday night from 7 p.m., excuse me, from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. at Imagination Brewing, first beer free with $20 flu shot. Good deal. 
like to thank our special guests, uh, Coach Aaron Keffler and middle blocker uh, Tizzy Wida of the state championship, uh, state champion Sentinel Spartan volleyball team. Congratulations, uh, girls. They are brought to you, as always, by First Montana Bank, your home for free centennial checking, plus unlimited cash back every time you use your debit card online at firstmontanabank.com. Hopefully we brought them good luck when they were in here about a month ago, Denny. And Well, uh, whether we did or not, we will say that we did. Yeah, well, so. it, I like that. Yeah. I are like you that. going to, to bring any playoff luck to uh, Missoula? Are you going to rain on our playoff parade? Or Wow. I've, I've heard a little talk both ways, but I haven't got your take on it yet. Well, so here's the deal. In years past, there has been – there's – there's been teams with losing records that get into the FCS playoffs if they win their conference. If they win their conference, um, there have been six and five teams, I believe, a Western, last, Illinois Western Illinois last, last year. year got in, um, and there's generally a handful of seven and four teams um, that get in it as well. Um, I was doing a little bit of studying today. Go figure, Denny. Mm-hmm. And. Where are the, where's that note I had? Well, you knew I was going to grill you on it, so you uh, here we you, go. You did some prep. So they, if you go to stats, uh, and that's the website for FCS football, it's, it's the best one out there. Um, they have got a playoff bracket um, already already figured out, um, and I'll just rattle off the teams that they have in there and the conferences that they uh, come from. You've you've got the Southern Conference, and I'm going to throw in the records where they should be if if they win. Oh, okay. Their, their games. Okay? So you're going to pick them to win the last regular well, season weekend. So yeah, and there's a couple that play each other, so that might be might be interesting. Uh, in the Southern Conference, you got four teams. You got Sam Samford, Wofford, Chattanooga, all at eight and three, and Sentinel finishing up at ten and one. All eight and three. Better, they should win their games. Better record than Montana. Uh, out of the Colonial, you've got four teams in there, and these are all with wins: uh, Maine at seven and four, James Madison at ten and one, Richmond at nine and two, and Villanova at eight and three. Out of the Missouri Valley Conference, which is the uh, North Dakota State Conference, you've got South Dakota State at nine and three, North Dakota State at ten and one, Western Illinois at eight and three, and Youngstown State at seven and four. Uh, the Southland, two teams, Sam Houston State 11-0, Central Arkansas 9-2. Out of the Patriot League, the champ, Lehigh 9-2. Ohio Valley, Jacksonville State, champ 9-1. Out of the MEAC, you've got North Carolina a and or North Carolina Central State. Uh, one's 9-1, and one's 8-2. and two. Whoever wins that's going to be the league champion, and they will get the bid. Uh, out of the Northeast Conference, St. Francis. Have already clinched. Yep. Hopefully they'll be eight. We we want them to win mm-hmm. to be eight and three. Out of the Pioneer, you've got San Diego, who's going to win that conference. Uh, out of the Big South, they've got Liberty at seven and four, and Charleston Southern at eight and three. And then out of the Big Sky, you've got Cal Poly at seven and four, Eastern Washington nine and one, and North or excuse me, Eastern Washington ten and one. And North Dakota at nine and two, which that's their predictions leaves out the Montana Grizzlies. There are a few things in there that you need to take a look at. Um, one, May needs to win this weekend to finish uh, seven and four. So they're six and four they're right now, just right like now. Montana. And they're and they're ranked, and not the ranking is the be all end all, but they're right. ranked about uh, thirty two. Okay, right now. Um, a Cal Poly loss puts them at six and five, which we pretty much want to have happen. Uh, and Cal Poly is playing who? Uh, Cal Poly is playing we Northern Colorado. Okay, they're yeah. playing. I don't. I don't care if Northern Colorado beat us or and they beat Cal Poly. I, they're not getting in the playoffs. They're okay. just not. All right. You you can't come out of nowhere and get on the cusp when there's other teams there that have. It's just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, Youngstown State at seven and four, or excuse me, six and four now, in a in a tough conference, uh, they need to lose to to finish uh, six and five, along with Maine at six and five, Cal Poly at six and five, Northern Iowa needs to beat South Dakota State just for the fact that it makes us look better because we've beat them. 
Um, St. Francis continuing to win would be nice because they're the other team that we have beaten. And then Southern Utah over NAU would be good as well because uh, we beat Southern Utah. The one game that is going to throw a monkey wrench into this whole deal is is Liberty. So Liberty's 4-1, and one, and Charleston Southern and Kennesaw State are both 3-1 and one in their conference. Mm. If, if Kennesaw State, well, let's see, how does this work? If So Charleston Southern has beat Liberty already. That's Liberty's one loss. If Charleston Southern beats Kennesaw, that means they would have beaten Kennesaw and and also Liberty. Then Liberty would be would be six and five, and they would be out of the playoffs. I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. So we want Charleston Southern to win that conference because if they lose, they're probably getting in. If they win, they'll knock Liberty out because right. Liberty will get the automatic bid. So there are a co- you know Maine losing, Cal Poly losing, Youngstown State losing and uh, Kennesaw State losing would be all very good for the Montana Grizzlies because, you know, and we have to win, of course. Mm -hmm. But we are, we are. I mean, there's no doubt, we are on the bubble. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if things have to, I don't know if if we're in, if all those teams win. This is the, that, uh, the the bracket is just one person's idea of how it's going to go down. But, you know, Maine at seven and four, Montana seven and four. So uh, two things. I, I was surprised that that Montana is still as high as it is in that whole Sagarin index. Not sure why. Maybe you can tell me why. So that's a that's a question. The other one is, um, you know, sometimes it comes down to dollars, and uh, Montana always puts in a very very good bid as a potential first round host. Well, and I and I think the only time that it comes down to dollars is when you actually get in and where that first right. game is going right. to so be. So first things first. Okay. Yeah, so I mean I don't I don't think that the money is going to get them into the playoffs, it, you know, all things being all things being even, sure. But it's that's going to matter when they decide who's going to host that first game. Okay. That's that's how I see it. Yeah. Um you know, uh, the Sagarin ranking, I mean Heck, I mean it's not it's not lofty, but you compare it to the other well, just compared to the other big sky schools outside of Eastern Washington. Well, yeah, uh, and then then you kind of start looking around at some of the FCS pods around the United States, and to me, you know, it was it was it was higher than I would thought a six and four team would be ranked. Yeah, well, you know, take a look at it this way. I guess you know you've you've beaten a a team that's won their conference in St. Francis. Mm-hmm. Um. You've you've beaten a what they were number four or three at the time three three a Northern Iowa school who who played good against uh, you know the F the uh, FBS um and your three other your three big losses they're all to teams with well winning record or, or even records you've got NAU who was ranked you've got uh, Eastern Washington who's number three you've got Cal Poly who's ranked you've got Northern Colorado who's on the cusp. Um, and you beat a Southern Utah team who was ranked number 24 at one time. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you know, I, I I tell you what, if if we don't get in, it's I'm not going to be crying foul. Yeah, that's for sure. Gotcha. And if, and that's if, a good point. And if we get in, I'm not going to listen to these idiots saying we didn't deserve it. So, whether you know, win or lose, hey, you know, we're in, and I'm fine with it either way. All right. So. There you go. That's that's I, my I'm, take on I'm it. I'm pretty much there too. Um, and we'll keep an eye on the, some of those games that we we talked about. And hey, maybe maybe things sure. will fall, fall yeah, our way. So that's a good guide. Um, but anyways, hey, when we come back, we have steal the week, stupid athlete of the week, and then we'll wrap it up on Sports Talk tonight. Now back to Missoula's Sports Talk tonight on KGBO. Missoula Sports. Every second of every day. We're back. Sports Talk tonight with Gerns and Bedard. Brought to you in part by Jerry Wessels Tire Center. A locally owned Les Schwab Tire Center provides the best tire value promise. Visit them online at jerrywesselstirecenter.com. And by CHS Mountain West Co-op. Western Montana source for Cynics Fuel, Feed Fertilizer, Clothing, and Tack. 
for over 75 years. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for Scott Guernsey's Steel of the Week. That's brought to you by True North Steel, Western Montana's industry leader in quality, manufactured, and fabricated steel products. Gerns, you have the steel floor. You know what, Denny? I a couple of really great games in the NFL this past week that uh, that involved steals. Uh, they both involved eight lead changes in the games, uh, and they both came down to the wire. Mm-hmm. Uh, first one, Dallas versus Pittsburgh. I mean, classic game, back and forth. Yeah. Uh, Steelers had a thirty to twenty-eight lead. There was nine seconds left. It looked like it was, uh, well, looked like it was over. And Ezekiel Elliott breaks off a long, long touchdown run uh, to win it for the Cowboys. After eight lead changes, uh, they win 35-30, to steal victory from the Steelers. And then the other great one was the Seahawks versus the Patriots. And, and four weeks ago, you might not have said this, but now might be shaping up to be a Super Bowl preview uh, again. Another game with eight different lead changes. Uh Patriots had the ball and and they were they're down seven and their first and goal uh, comes down to a fourth play, fourth down play and it was nice to see the refs not steal anything away from anybody as it was a good no call uh, Gronkowski and, and Chancellor in the end zone incomplete pass uh, eight lead changes with the Seahawks pulling it out so a couple of really really exciting NFL games that is your steal or steals uh, of the week. Kind of a double there. Uh, brought to you by True North Steel. Uh, Western Montana's industry leader in quality manufactured and fabricated steel products. Uh, stupid athlete of the week, Denny. Right. I, I got a couple of them. One, one sad, Isaiah Pede, uh, a running back who played for the Rams uh, at the University of Cincinnati. Played for the Rams for a couple years. Was with the Dolphins. Um, just kind of bouncing around a little bit in the league. And he was uh, driving near, near his home. Uh, supposedly 90 miles an hour, no seatbelt, gets thrown out of the car. Uh, didn't die, but uh, going to go through some some issues for the rest of his life, basically. And, you know, put on your seatbelt. If it, you know, number one, don't speed. I don't know what else you were doing, but hey, put the yeah. seatbelt on. Stupid. Uh, Randy Gregory, who was drafted by the Cowboys last year, uh, has been suspended a couple times for substance abuse. And once again, he's just about ready to get eligible to come uh, back and play, and uh, and he, he gets busted again. Come on, man. Just throwing your life away. Stupid, stupid, stupid. On the other hand, Denny, uh, Tony Romo, I don't know if you heard or if you heard of his – heard his uh, – <clears throat> on the drive, uh, I was last night or the night before. On the drive, driving home uh, the other night, Jennifer read it to me. Oh, uh, you know, I was a uh, man. I, I was what pretty a, impressed. What a class act! And it, yeah, they, oh yeah. But you know, Tony Romo's hurt at the start of the year. The rookie quarterback comes in, lights the world on fire. Um, might even be the MVP of the whole league. It's possible. Um, He's got a chance. But uh, and it was interesting because because Romo, it, same thing happened to him. You know, he was a young kid and, and came in and. And took over the starting job, and and he was just basically saying out there, "Hey, I'm going to do nothing but support this quarterback, and and I've been in his shoes, and it was just a it was a class act." And I tell you what, he is a quarterback that's got a few few more uh, miles left on the tread. Well, I would think so. I mean, he is uh, what 35, 36, yeah, something like that. There. He'd do uh, great in a you know in a half a dozen. NFL City, San yeah, Francisco I, I, 49ers. I think and we've A1. learned from guys like like Tom Brady and, and Peyton Manning that that uh, pushing 40 is not the end of the world for a, a premier quarterback. No. And if he can stay healthy, um, well, that's yeah, the, that's uh, that's the deal there. Yeah, but, uh, I I hope and and I'm going to assume in good faith that if if these were the the kind of you're coming off of these kinds of injuries because when you start talking about spinal and and vertebrae and broken this and and broken that back there um you 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 got to believe that okay there there's nothing uh, quality of life paralysis threatening or or like that. there can't be anything like that or if it's just physicians would say you know tony you're you're, you're done pal great yeah. career but but you can't do this anymore you don't hear that and i'm happy about that but like you say you know it you you don't want another serious injury like that to happen well he and he's his back's been bad for years i mean so uh you know it's a question of hey how when are you going to hang it up or you know continue to abuse your body but hey he's an athlete and a competitor and uh, it was just a real class act 
I thought so too. And that was very well done. They did. Hey, you know, sad note, uh, uh, Lady Grizz last night, uh, they, they, they get a victory over Great Falls, but they lose um, another player in Alicia yeah. Sims. Uh, the the verdict's not in yet on on her knee, but I from what I understand, it, it didn't look very good. And... Well, as uh, uh, while while writhing in pain, I, I think what uh, the message that she was trying to convey. What happened was it was in the third quarter, and uh, she she got the ball, I believe, on the high post, and she did just kind of a little a little not not a spin move, but she she rolled to her left, and so now she's headed toward the baseline. And at the baseline, now she cuts left again, and that's when the the, the foul, the contact occurred, and um, she she went down and and screamed in pain, and that place, you know, you could hear a pin drop in there, um, and so, but but I think what she was trying to convey is that the pain wise, what it felt like is this is like it was the other time, uh, just because she can feel that, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I guess as they kind of speaking to you, we were talking about Tony Romo, and I remember when he went off the field last year. I, I think you could read his lips saying it was the same thing, or it was a clavicle. It was he he knew that it was the same kind of injury. Now it's not on the same knee, but she already she already wears a, a pretty large brace on the one, and uh, this was the other one. It wasn't you know, and and you, you don't expect this, I, I guess, in 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 women's basketball for what that statement's worth but there was there was nothing overly physical about it overly dirty play there wasn't anything like that it was great falls's center and um uh you know alicia alicia just kind of kind of beat her on the dribble drive and so she bodied her up near the baseline it was just one of those things well those young girls better be better be ready to play and uh, and Shannon will get them coached up, and uh, eat, you know, you know what will. you do what you do. You know she will. So. You do what you do. Different kind of week for the football team preparing for this one, isn't it? Boy. Practice is a little bit different. Media things a little bit different. And you know it's uh, it, it's funny because you never realize that it's do or die until it's do or die. Yeah. And it's yeah. but it's been do or die do or die for weeks for the Montana Grizzlies. Yeah. And uh, you yeah. know what? This is this is the game where you you know that you're 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 fighting your brother, you're fighting your family, and uh, it's it's. Uh, it's for all the marbles this yeah. year, so there Pro- is something on it. Programming note before we wrap it up, it's our last November show. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving to you. We've got Lady Grizz basketball next Wednesday night, Lady Grizz basketball the following Wednesday here on KGVO. So I guess I'll see you on a Wednesday night in December, Gerns. Well, I'll see you Saturday, Danny. Yes, sir, you will. Sports Talk tonight. Good night.